The elusive plug-in hybrid, the RAV4 Prime, arguably Toyota's best powertrain available, if you can find one on the market, has just been recalled. Let's get into it. Before we get into this, we're also going to look at the current state of the market and the availability of these plug-in hybrids, the sales of these plug-in hybrids recently. Then we'll also talk about Subaru, their profitability on their Japanese-made vehicles. We'll also talk about Tesla a little bit and Nissan's solid-state batteries. So make sure you have your snacks and drinks today and let's get into it. Over at cars.com, 43,000 Toyota Lexus vehicles recalled for fire risk. Affected vehicles include model year 2021 RAV4 Prime and model year 2022 Lexus NX450H Plus. This powertrain is literally the holy grail for Toyota in my opinion. You get about 40 miles of EV range. You get over 300 horsepower. It does zero to 60 around five and a half to six seconds. And when that EV range runs out, you're still able to get around 40 miles per gallon in hybrid mode. It's fantastic. It's super responsive. It's smooth. It's quiet. It's versatile, etc. But apparently it's been flawed. Let's head on over to what Australia's Lexus press room has to say. They have a whole write up on it and it's really excessive, to be honest. We're not going to cover this whole article. All right, so the Australian press release is saying it's well, it's, o it's only affected 154 customers for the Lexus NX in their market. So the issue is actually from a DC-DC converter that reduces the voltage of electricity from the hybrid vehicle battery in order to charge the vehicle's 12-volt battery. Contained within the DC-DC converter is a current rectifying module that is installed on the circuit board. And in some of these modules, they may have been damaged during production, which could lead to a short circuit. Under certain conditions, if excessive heat is generating components within and outside the DC-DC converter, it could sustain thermal damage, increase the risk of a vehicle fire. Of course, this is a recall. It's going to be replaced free of charge. And they even say it should only take about 75 minutes to replace. But this is Lexus we're talking about. They're going to give you a loaner if you want one. Customers are instructed not to use the AC plug-in charger until their Lexus dealer has replaced the DC-DC converter. However, they can continue to drive their vehicle. Okay, so you can just run it in hybrid mode, but you're just going to be carrying that big brick around all the time since you can't charge it. This gets me a little bit. How do I continue to drive my vehicle if I cannot use the AC plug-in charger? Well, they say continue to drive it without the AC plug-in charger using premium and leaded fuel only. Guys, it's the same exact powertrain as what we see in the RAV4 Prime, which takes unleaded fuel. So if you wanted to get two, three, four more horsepower out of it, yes, you put premium in there, but it doesn't need it. It's recommended to get that horsepower and fuel economy ratings that Lexus quotes but you can put regular fuel in. It's a naturally aspirated two and a half liter. Let's go ahead and look at how the sales have been doing on the good old RAV4 Prime as well as NX plug-in hybrid. So far this year, the RAV4 Prime has had its best first half in 2023 than it's had in the previous couple of years that it's been sold. So RAV4 Prime has increased in volume compared to last year, but their standard hybrid has tanked in terms of volume, but they've sold about 11,000 units for the first half. We look at the NX plug-in hybrid, they've actually sold almost 2,300 units where the NX hybrid uh, is up about 50% compared to last year. Compared to the RAV4 hybrid, uses the same powertrain, is down 34%. They're doing some, some luxury shuffling to favor the NX, I'm almost certain of it, up there in Canada. Now, the plug-in hybrids all come from Japan. Looking at my local availability for RAV4 primes within 200 miles, there are only five. $51,000, that that's the correct price. It's not marked up here, so that's good to see. This one is actually seeing a price drop under MSRP. So that's the first time that I'm aware of. And maybe it's unique to my area because um, Florida is not quite the EV state in some ways as let's say it's California or New York. So that's pretty crazy that you can actually get one on discount. So there are five RAV4 Primes within 200 miles. There are actually two more Lexus NX. There's a total of seven plug-in hybrid NXs. And these come in at $63,000, right at around MSRP. Uh, for the F-Sport model, there's also luxury, which they cost about the same. And if I remember right, I want to say you can't get like the panel roof on the NX plug-in hybrid, uh, which is a big bummer. So let's switch gears on to Toyota's partner, which is Subaru. Toyota owns a large stake in Subaru. And what's 
going on over there with the with the current, I guess, market landscape is that it makes a lot more financial sense for Subaru to make vehicles in Japan, export them to the United States, sell them to the United States than it does to make them in Indiana and sell them in the United States. It's more profitable for them. And let's get into why. Subaru's earning power based on operating profit per unit was the best among Japanese major automakers for the fiscal year ending in March. Their operating profit per vehicle rose 150% for the year ending in March to about 314,000 yen, or about $2,200 per vehicle, surpassing Toyota's 309,000 yen per vehicle, about 200,000 yen ahead of Mazda and Suzuki, which are about similar size. So Mazda and Suzuki are making around 100,000 yen per vehicle, which is probably, I don't know, $800, something like that. The weakening yen and the strong US dollar is helping Subaru out and the other Japanese automakers, helping them massively. Without the currency exchange benefit that we currently see going on in Japan, they would only be making about 50,000 yen per vehicle. Instead, they're making six times that. Subaru produces about two thirds of its vehicles at the Gunma plant in Japan. That's also where they make the Toyota GR86 alongside uh, the Subaru BRZ. One third come from the state of Indiana, but since so many parts makers are gathered around the Tokyo area and close to Gunma, that's benefiting Subaru's scaling and efficiency advantages. Labor costs are also massively different. In Indiana, the average worker is making about $89,000 a year there. The average worker over there in the government plant in Japan is making roughly half of what the United States workers do. And because of all these factors of local availability of parts, the weak yen, as well as low uh, overhead for their employees, and even when taking into the shipping costs, it's still around 10% cheaper to build vehicles in Japan than in the United States. All right, I wanted to bring in Nissan into this because they're taking their old Yokohama plant, their first plant ever, it's about 90 years old, and they are retrofitting it to build hybrid powertrains as well as they will have their first ever solid state battery pilot line starting there. Yeah, I think next year, and they'll have solid state batteries out by 2028. Remember yesterday, Nissan came out as the first Japanese automaker to adopt the NAX standard the charging standard from Tesla to charge their electric vehicles starting in 2024, and giving an adapter to the Aria, and then in 2025, all their EVs will be uh, equipped with the NAX charging port. And it's an open standard, so Nissan doesn't have to pay anything. Speaking of Tesla, though, they are planning to expand their Berlin plant. Now they're getting a lot of kickback from people working there. There's not, a lot of, not enough water in the region and they're worried about Tesla soaking up all the water to produce these battery electric vehicles. But if they're able to expand the plant that they want to, they will be making 1 million vehicles per year in top capacity, which is more than what Volkswagen does as its Wolfsburg plant, which produces about 400,000. So they would have the largest factory in Germany. An American automaker out of nowhere comes in and produces more vehicles in a single factory than anywhere else by any German automaker in Germany. Now that Wolfsburg plant, if it is at full tilt, production can produce 800,000 vehicles. But last year, they only built 400,000 vehicles out of it. But even at full tilt, best case scenario, looks like Tesla will have Volkswagen be in their own market. Now, it's not just for the German market. That's just where their European manufacturing hub is. And then they ship out Teslas from Germany to all other parts of Europe. Same thing that Volkswagen does with their own vehicles that are produced there. Currently, Tesla's producing 5,000 vehicles per week out of that plant in Grunheide. Uh, so if we multiply that by 52 weeks out of the year, they're producing 260. So essentially, want to quadruple their capacity over in Germany. It's quite incredible how fast that they want to ramp up. And lastly, Tesla says that they will be shelling out their full self-driving technology to another major OEM. I have no idea who it would be. My get, my original guess was Mercedes-Benz, but they have their own level three driving software, so it's probably not them. Maybe it's Stellantis. Uh, Stellantis could take advantage of Tesla's self-driving software. I don't know if Stellantis has any level three autonomous working vehicles out there on the road. I haven't done a lot of research. I don't care a lot about autonomy, but I just find this a fascinating that Tesla is interested in licensing their self-driving technology to other automakers 
for a fancy fee. It's only in the early discussion, so it might not go through, but if it does go through, I'll update you guys on which automaker is going to be working with Tesla's full self-driving software. Let me know if you have a RAV4 Prime or NX plug-in hybrid. What has your situation been? Hopefully, you haven't had a short circuit on your DC-DC converter. Uh, and yeah, man, I, Toyota needs to put this hybrid setup in the Sienna, the Grand Highlander, the new Camry coming out. It would be amazing in that as well. The Prius Prime's powertrain is also incredible for smaller vehicles, and that should be in as many C-platform vehicles as possible, like the Corolla Cross as well. But CHR is getting it, but that's for Europe. But anyways, I got to shut it down there. If you guys made this fun video, you rock. And of course, special thanks to my paying members. You guys help put food on the table for the babies. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day and peace out.